All right, hello everybody out there in Trade Ideas land. My name is Steve. I am joined here with Andy. Hello, Andy. Hey, Steve. How you doing? Hi, everybody. Welcome uh, to the webinar. Yeah, if you tuned in yesterday, we did not have our MC Scott. Looks like he's absent again another day, so we're just going to go ahead and run it without him here, and we'll have a party. <laughs> I don't want to say that. Um, all right. The reason I said that is because we're not going to do the uh, the old polls and stuff. We're just going to get right into it. So I assume you guys see my screen and hear my voice. I'll just get started here. Trade of the week. Reminder. Thank you, Jock. Thank you, David. Um, Andy and I are uh, longtime personal traders. And for the last few years, we've also been employees of Trade Ideas. And we're going to talk about some stock market stuff, how to use uh, Trade Ideas, and um, you know some opinions on charts, things like that. But that is not to be construed as a financial advice. So if you're looking for ideas on how to invest your money, we're not professionals to give out advice. We're just a couple of opinion holders here. And that's really all it should be. All right. You're never alone with trade ideas. Um, most people subscribe for one month and that first, let me grab this so he doesn't bug me. Um, see, he's already throwing me off, the British man. Um, one month is a really, really a long, let me rephrase that. One month is about the right amount of time it really takes to get a feel for trade ideas, how to use it, how to make it work for you and um, what all the, um, features are, some of them you may not have learned about, and the way in which to learn about those and to custom tailor it really is to join these types of webinars we have right now, but more importantly, during the day when the market's open, we've got Barry in the live trading room being very generous with his time and his screen and his scans as well, so never a problem to join Barry and ask a question. He's very generous with his time and wants everybody to understand the program. We give him a break every afternoon. East Coast time, and one of us will jump in the live stream and kind of give the uh, uh, the broadcast a little flavor, a little different flavor, different set of eyes. Um, you know, some of us are more uh, scalpers, and some of us are more swing traders. Some of us are more data oriented, like Michael. Some of us are more swing. I'm sorry, um, options related, like Sean. So there's a lot of different um, flavors that you can get on the noon broadcast, Eastern time. The way in which you get there is that bottom live, that trade-ideas.com forward slash live. Once you've gone there once and watched the uh, live stream at noon Eastern, the YouTube algorithm is going to figure that out and it's going to serve it up to you every day about the same time. So it's real easy to find us and there's no reason not to because we encourage you guys to come in and ask questions and drive the content. No question is ever too basic because there are probably other people who want to know the same thing. So. Take advantage of those, for sure, take advantage. Yes, Sean taking, uh, what day is Sean taking, uh, talking options? He talks options on Mondays, David. He was not here yesterday. He's taking a little time off in the woods of New York, Eastern New York, but he'll be back on Monday. So mark your calendar. You can ask him anything options related. I mean, his knowledge of options is so far above mine that uh, it's not even funny <laughs> to ask an options question. To me versus Sean, you're gonna wanna listen to Sean. All right, that brings us to our theme of the week and every week, humans and machines combined are gonna give you guys the best results. Um, I can't trade without trade ideas, but uh, trade ideas can't trade on its own without me to manage my account with real-time nuances. So it's a great symbiotic relationship that I try and remind everybody each and every week. It's a team, the human and the machine working together gives us the best chances at results. All right, there's our agenda for today, typical uh, kind of format. Um, the one thing that is different is I got a little scan I kind of dug out there we're going to talk about and, and look at and um, see if we can't refine it maybe a little better. But there's some nuggets in there. Um, I have not even looked at the sector ETFs uh, for a few hours, so we'll look at those together for the first time for me and see if we can, as usual, find a few ideas for tomorrow in terms of the bigger picture of the sectors and then chart requests. We always walk ourselves out of here with a few charts, so we'll get to that as well. All right, so with that being said, we'll come back to that one for sure, but we'll start with the SPY, S&P 500, and if you were with me yesterday with Jamie, you know, we talked a lot about that candle going into the weekend, and for once, I didn't have any short exposure with a candle that looked as ominous as that did. I mean, I'm telling you, that looked ominous. Red body candle closing on lows under the 50-day moving average. Once again, it was just really Lucy holding the football for Charlie Brown to run up and try and kick it. 
and fall on his ass because that's what we got a uh, big big reversal a little bit more sloppy than the ones in the past in terms of bouncing off that 50 but this is the market we have and until it changes you got to respect this pattern that we get um, I mentioned yesterday that the NASDAQ, the Qs were kind of uh, slow to the draw when the S&P was uh, popping up pretty hard. And, um, but it put in, I'll show you what it did one more time there. There you go. That was the look yesterday. And I said, you know, that is just a really good look. That's the kind of stuff we were all getting um, long and salivating over those types of setups back in uh, quarter three and quarter four last year. And then it all just kind of fell apart in, in 2022. These uh, setups don't work as well, but this isn't a stock. This is um, the e, uh, the ETF for the NASDAQ. And I do believe Mr. Jerome Powell was, um, you know, making people happy once again. Um, you, know, you cannot fight the Fed. You cannot fight the money printer. We cannot fight the quagmire that these guys have gotten themselves into a once in a lifetime jam, probably once in eternity jam. We have never seen anything like this, but here we are. And we watch it unfold every single day. The liquidity just continues to be poured into this market, be it real or fake, it doesn't matter. That nice little bottoming wick in the queues yesterday, I said, well, it's probably time to pass the baton and shoot the NASDAQ up to all time highs. And that's what we got today. Uh, the IWM, which was bringing up the rear for the last few days, is, you know, found itself jumbled. But, you know, I'm going to back up a little bit. The real story for the IWM here is it goes nowhere, right? IWM goes nowhere. It just wants to do this. So, you know, play with that how you wish. Um, you know, I will say if the IWM does break out and start moving back up again, then the, the small caps, the OTCs will probably um, start coming to life and they will like that for sure. Um, but for now, it's just a jumbled mess there in uh, small cap land for the most part. Um, so, We'll probably see all-time high again, all-time highs again very shortly, probably maybe even tomorrow in the S&P 500. Um, and that's the market we have. So uh, we just got to work with it. But uh, I, for one, am kind of glad because, uh, I mean, you guys heard me you know, back here and back here. I would start to put on some ETF shorts or just a little something-something insurance in case those days ever followed through. But um there's mysterious forces holding this market up right now uh, with what is going on behind the scenes. And again, as I said, it's untested waters. These, I don't think any market's ever seen anything quite like what we're seeing in terms of the liquidity being force fed and injected into uh, the market, forcing institutions, fund managers, and people alike to take on risk, put risk on and buy stock. So that's where we are. Anything you wanna to add to the market recap, Andy? No, man, <clears throat> excuse me, you pretty much hit it on the head, Steve. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, and now can we really say uh, the 50 moving average is our bogey because we closed well below it two couple of days ago and we just still came back. So, man, it's hard to, it's hard to gauge. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie. On when to throw I, in the towel, you know. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I said I, I was not participating in this one. And Andy knows, he, he heard me venting to him oh, yeah. back panel. Andy. <laughs> I swear to God, of all the times I've tried, look at this close. This is going to be the one time that the market falls and I'm not positioned <laughs> because that's the way the trading guys yeah. like to play around with us. So, I mean, I was kind of happy to see that because. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it it's. protected my ego. <laughs> yep. Yep. I mean, I was not. Luckily, I was long TZA and I started taking some profits. So I took two thirds off because I'm so used to this and then basically just flatted my last uh, mm -hmm. position. But uh, yeah, looked like they I thought, oh, boy, this is it. Yeah, they do. They, <laughs> so, they come back quick. But the problem, yeah. the problem is, and this is what happens with me, is I get into this. I'm like, oh, that's the sound of my hands, you know, rubbing together, <laughs> greedy. Oh, boy, do I have a good position this time. And I'm just going to look <laughs> back and nope. You, know, you you should be thinking the exact opposite. You should be thinking you were damn lucky to get that good entry. You got yeah. some profits. You should probably bang those out and take them. So yeah. uh, we're all learning together because there's no one right way to do this day in and oops, day in and day out. There's no one right way to do this. All right, mm -hmm. so that's uh, where we are in the market. Oh, quick quick announcement, guys. Um, I'm taking uh, the week off, and there's going to be no trade of the week this week. So. Uh, there'll be no trade of the week email. There might be something else in there uh, that could be for some value, uh, for some ideas for trading. 
but that is going to mean there will be no Tuesday webinar next week. So I'm sorry for you regulars. I love it when you guys show up and I see your familiar names and your comments and questions, but not going to be here next week. It's summer and that's when people start taking vacations. So quick announcement there. All right, Andy, if you want to take it over and talk Alrighty. about the AI, it looks like we did not get blessed with the Tuesday curse this time. No, we did not. Uh, I got blessed with the Thursday one last week, but uh, boy, this mm. one was this one was really nice. And I'm going to uh, talk about it using our new docking feature. This is our new uh, docking channel. You'll be able to, guys, in the future, go to the new tab and click in on a new docked channel bar. Okay, and you're going to. Um, well, eventually we're just going to make these part of the regular channel. The channels are just going to be in docks. Uh, and this is the new Omni. I've already loaded about, oh, 20, uh, 20 of them up, 20 channels up. And uh, this is going to be the new AI look. Um, everything, we're kind of going for this kind of clean, really uh, uh, just, you know, make it structured, a little standardized, you know, just so it's easy for especially new people to come in when they go through these channels, not have every, all these windows all over the place. So uh, I hope you guys like it. This is going to be like the new Omni. I did uh, show to my Thursday webinar, and for the most part, a lot of people love the new look, so we're kind of going with it. Uh, so let's talk about the AI today. So uh, as you can see, there's not there's not two more two windows anymore. I got everything into one window. Okay, the strategy trades, um, and then on the AI strategies window, just always showing you the basic segment strategy and of course the profit factor and the winning percentage. Things that I think that are important when people wake up in the morning and looking at the uh, at the strategies that made the cut uh, for the uh, uh, for the day. So. Uh, interesting day. Yeah, not a lot of trades. Only see seven, eight, nine trades. And conservative profit did well. If I toggle through the uh, strategy uh, window over here, aggressive profit, we don't really talk about that because it ignores stops. Uh, but conservative and moderate both had a, a, a decent day. And oh, it's getting a little choppy over here now, Steve. Uh, so Let's take a look at the key winners, and then we'll take a look at some losers as well. Uh, KFY was really the uh, just a beautiful little signal right there in KFY. Uh, took a man. I mean, this is just the AI and its probability working at its best. Because if you look at the daily here, the, it's kind of been a mess when the signal was called. But what did we have, guys? Okay, this is from the pullback long strategy. Okay, if you looked over here, you would find it was from NEO. Uh, and look at the uh, relative volume today. This is kind of jacked a little bit. It doesn't have my relative volume in it. I got to work with that. Uh, this window gets a little quirky. But anyway, the 6.79 is the relative volume. Uh, obviously, probably some news on this today. Uh, definitely no earnings. Earnings are not until June 16th. But you had volume today. And you had a great pullback long called right here at 66.47. And really, man, didn't even look back. No pain trade is what we call these, you know, and uh, just all day long hold. And boy, when you look at a chart like this, this is when you kick yourself if you got out on target hit. OK, because look at all. There was another, oh, Josh, three dollars and 34 cents left in that trade if you would have held it to the close. Beautiful trade there. Also, this ASAN to the short side. Let me clean this up. ASAN to the short side was just lovely. And there you have it. Okay, it's a gap down. And this was one of those ones you gap down, it popped up, and you're fading that up move right there. Uh, signal called at 58. And, you know, if you held it all day, it went all the way down to 56. So $2 in that trade. Uh, beautiful trade there. A uh, couple of shorts down here didn't work. This PRTK was not a big loser, not a stop. This was definitely a stop hit. Let me uh, put this like this. Gosh, Steve, mine's getting glitchy now. I don't know what's going on. It's probably all that testing you've been doing with all the dang container windows. <laughs> you're right. I, I've had so many buildings, so many. Uh, yeah, you're right. Docs over here. Yeah, I probably just need to log off and log back in. But um, uh, 
ALF. To me, not a not a good call uh, by the AI today. You can see that's what we call a gap and basically gap and go. Uh, I've seen this uh, uh, bull trap work before, but this was just not one of those cases. What may have kept you out of that trade with you to watching the volume this morning? There was huge volume on this thing. Uh, that would have been a, as a matter of fact, I think Barry uh, ended up going long on this one in the trading room. So uh, just, <laughs> I guess you can let uh, Holly kind of point to you and uh, assemble and you decide which way you want to go with it. In most cases, you go against Holly, you're probably going to lose. But uh, this is a case where, hey, he saw the gap. He saw the horseshoe developing there. I would have shorted the chart. No, no, <laughs> no. And uh, just a, um, uh, you know, beautiful horseshoe there. If you if you did take it with Barry in the room or something like that, I don't know if you did. But another great trade if you took it. Uh, but all in all, look, nice, moderate profit uh, using my allocation. I'm not going to go in there since I'm kind of glitchy right now, but uh, uh, it's based upon risk on the stop loss. So it goes out and buys the exact number of shares where I won't lose more than $200. That's why my stops are all $200. And uh, but anyway, a great day. Uh, don't know if you want to add anything. Uh, there's, there is one more, I guess. Let's talk about this right here real quick, Steve. And that was the uh, in conservative. This one right here. Oh, that was a long. Well, you had to be quick though. You got that one move, and then that was. But that's a 15-minute candle, so you would have had time. But uh, yeah, that one. That one. I don't know if I would have taken personally. All right, Steve. I'm um, gonna right. shoot it back to you. That's about it. Shoot it back. We'll talk All right. about the trade of the week. We'll start here with my uh, daily chart. Great. All right. Um, you know, the genesis of this, again, is not, and I'm going to hit this point a few times here in the next 10 minutes. This trade was not spit out by the Golden Goose money-making um, all-star scan. It was literally just, you know, keeping an eye on a name that I'd been familiar with for a while. One of the things that was interesting last week was Smith & Wesson, and I... <laughs> We're going to talk about gaps and what to do with gaps. And there's, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to talk about a scan that will give us the four different scenarios of a gap and how we can maybe try to make sense of them. But i um, pretty sure this probably was on there on this on one that we're going to look at, a nice gap up and go. And the reason I kind of kick myself for not paying more attention to this is I remember pre-market seeing their sales. Their sales literally blew the cover off the ball. They were, they were amazing. And I know Barry and even Andy, to a certain extent, really – gives post earnings surprises to the good site you give that a lot of uh, confidence a lot of weight uh, to keep get you in a trade so that would that would have been a great trade but we're not talking about SWI we're talking about handguns and the handgun sales are long whatever gun sales seem to be um, pretty uh, uh, in demand right now we also have another one Ruger which uh, kind of had some nice sympathy as well but along the way, for the last you know six months or so, I've played this stock in and out. It's an ammo stock. It's an ammo play. And if anybody kind of read some of the news stories, like many supply chain and, uh, problems out there, this was even the original supply chain <laughs> problem. You were having a hard time finding ammo a year ago before a lot of the stuff that we're talking about now, finding certain products and things um, uh, in, in the system. But nonetheless, the idea, and again, the genesis kind of came from uh, the handgun sales, and I think it's you know pretty obvious to say that ammunition and handgun sales might work together. So what we had was a look going into the weekend of that, that right there, and it closed at or near highs, breaking out of a nice wedge with some solid um, solid volume. And so you know this one kind of tipped its hand, and we went ahead and said let's just go, let's let's play the follow through. And as I've said many times follow through uh, for more than a day is very hard to get. And so that kind of showed up a little bit on our entry. Let's go to the intraday here. And the entry did all the fun things of making all that noise on the open. Right there, I'll highlight it for you. Okay, so um, the 
open, actually, yeah, the open would have been, yeah, the open was right there. I watched this thing at the bell. You could have grabbed it five minutes to the bell right there at the price if you'd wanted it, but as we got closer to the bell, I think some people started creeping in and buying it, but doing exactly what we've been talking about, the opening nonsense of just throwing elbows all the way up, all the way back, down here is our low for the day. But as I mentioned yesterday in Jamie's webinar, that 775 at the end of the day, 775 seemed to be holding pretty well. And I said, I really wasn't concerned about this. You know, this, this stock has a bit of a volatile personality, but in the bigger picture, let's go forward one day there. No, we couldn't do that. We'll just go forward one day. There it is. I said, that didn't bother me. It didn't close on lows, didn't close on highs, but it just made a lot of noise and it's still very much in play. And again, we're using our rising 10 SMA here as our risk management. So now that we go into today, we had a nice follow through and it kind of gives us an indication that this really does seem to be the flavor and the intent of this particular stock. It's not a big short float. Um, it's a rather small float. I think it's only 50 some odd million. What is it? Yeah, 59 million shares in the float. So it can do things like it did yesterday, throw an elbow up and then throw an elbow down and just kind of do what it does. But at the end of the day, as I've said so many times, I like to base my decisions and the health of the stock and what to do with the stock, lighten up, add to it, stay in it, get out. I like to figure that out at the end of the day. And the end of the day today, we're closing on highs and we're still right there at highs after market. Um, hoping for some continued follow through tomorrow. Andy brought up a good level of 870. If you just scroll out and look left, the 870 level is derived from the high of that wick right there. So what I might do is I might just pop in uh, a price alert. Uh, price alert, where are you? Price alert and let that let me know. Pow resistance question mark might be a place to take a third off maybe take a little bit of profit off the table there you never know but honestly guys i really feel like this thing has the potential to get up here to 12 i'm sorry to 10 um oh yeah because because this thing is a wild personality i mean look back here it went from four to ten in about two weeks maybe less so it's got the personality to do it and on the heels of something that everybody can point to gun sales the story is there and that's what i really highlighted in the um in the uh email it gave me a chance to really rattle off my coined uh term once again does the chart confirm the story the chart must confirm the story the story is yeah gun sales are flying off the shelf well that must mean ammo sales are flying gotta, off yeah the shelf. gotta have bullets put in there hmm. let's take a look at the chart hey again two days ago Looks like the chart confirms the story. Let's let's take a shot. So that was the creation, the genesis. It's not coming off of a single golden goose scan, which I'm going to talk about in a minute here. It's just a matter of watching things. You know, I've got my watch list over here. Look what's on there. Pow, Pow's been on my watch list for six months. It's just one of the stocks I watch. And so when you keep an eye on these things, you, you kind of start to get a feel for the jump rope. OLN is also an ammo stock, says Betty Sue. Let's take a look and see if the chart confirms the story on OLN. Not bad. Doesn't look as good as POW, and it's also had a pretty good run. It's had a very good long run. Uh, 158 million on the float. Not bad, but yeah, everybody else out there, probably not a good, probably a good idea to um, um, acquaint yourself with the fact that OLN um, might also be a, it um, uh, looks like they make the, uh, materials that go into the the bullets whereas pow might actually make the casings and the whole thing i don't know i'm just spitballing now on that one <laughs> all right so traded of the week remains intact it's working thank god our rising 10 sma is our risk management right there might be wise to take maybe a little bit off a quarter a third off at the 870 level but i think this thing can get to 10 i, I really do all right so on the heels of me saying you know one of the things that new users kind of have a misunderstanding about is that um, we can come in and we can refine this scan that's just going to work really well every day week after week and it's just not the case every day is different market might be in a bad mood market might be in a good mood market might have gapped up market might have gapped down we just don't really know so all we can try and do is just create scans and use the technology to give us a curated list of ideas. Like I said in the beginning, human and machine. Let the machine give us the curated ideas and we'll kind of take it from there. Yeah, John, the recording and anybody else interested in the recording, if there's any problem on your end, it will be uploaded probably later this evening, uh, if not early tomorrow morning on our YouTube channel and you can rewatch a lot of this. 
Um, all right, so as I mentioned, um, there's no golden goose scan. All we can do is kind of give ourselves some ideas to play with each day. And it got me thinking, I know at one time I made these, uh, I made this scan called the gap and dot, dot, dot. All right, I'm gonna minimize that for a second. All right, so this is a multi-strategy window, meaning we can put many different strategies into one window. And these windows can get rather noisy at times if you got a lot of things going on. But what I quickly wanna do is I wanna show you the concept behind this is to give us a list of ideas that are in play that gapped uh, after the market opens, not just the pre-market gap of showing what's gonna open. This is what, what are they doing after? And I wanna quickly go through these strategies so you can see, because they're self-explanatory. Gap and go, what does that mean? Okay, gap and go. Okay, so it's a new high on a gap of at least 4% or 0 0.5 in dollars. And I'm not quite sure why this is in there. And this might be the first thing that you could do because I'm gonna give this scan out before somebody asks, don't worry. Um, I would just be kind of happy with stocks that had a big gap. I'm not necessarily sure that we need that dollar amount in there, but I'm gonna leave it in there because it's the way that I had it built when I pulled it back up. So that is the scenario when stocks gap up and go to new highs. We're gonna see those new highs of stocks that gapped up. Um, always interesting to know that, all right? The other gap scenario is gap and crap. All right, so they gapped up and they're making new lows on us. So everything else is gonna be pretty much the same. The price, volume today, again, all we wanna do is see 50,000 shares traded so far. That's another filter that maybe could be beefed up, but the problem is, and we're gonna run into this, is you know how can we see these things as early as possible? We, wanna, we don't wanna see them too late. And if you start cranking up volume today to 100, 200 or something, you might miss a couple that you might otherwise wanna see. So using the trade ideas, new low, on stocks that gapped up at least 4% or 50 cents. And we'll find out when they're making new lows and we can start to track them. The third scenario is the gap down and go. Those are the worst ones. When you're, you're hoping for the gap down to reverse and you're long and it doesn't go, it just keeps going to new lows. That's no fun. So again, um, oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, gap and go. This is gap and go up, gapping and going back up. These are interesting. Um, because we're looking at new highs on stocks that gapped down. There's the slowness. It's gonna freeze up on me. So stocks that gapped down and turned around and start making a new high, those are gonna show up in whatever particular color I've got that. It looks like, um, I don't know, we're gonna find out in a second here. God, I'm frozen. Come on now. Dead air. Yeah, guys, we're always working with new dev versions, and so we get some little glitches like this at time. One more is the um, gap down and crap. I won't go into all the details of that. It's just that's the one I said earlier. Those are the ones you don't want to be long coming into. They gap down and they don't go. They don't reverse and come back up green. They gap and they just keep going to lows. Now, these are very hard to come by in this particular market that we're trading. You know, this is the uh, the biggest bull market we've seen in a while. So that might not always be the best strategy, but it's in there nonetheless. I added this one today. This one was just added today and I gave it a purple color and it said gap and crap to the 10. So this is kind of like the, I like the odds that Andy did last week, but I'm defining it more as to when I want to see it. So the stocks are gapping up. Um, I only have this one gapping up 1%, which is interesting. I could probably change that. Um, but this is the money filter right here, the change from the 10 SMA, and I'm using my 15 minute 10 SMA. So no more than a 10th of a percent below and no more than a 10th of a percent above when a stock makes a new low in that little window of uh, relative um, area to the 10 SMA, 10 SMA on a 15 chart, that's when we're gonna see this alert. So I kind of added that one today and um, it actually gave me a, an interesting one, but I wanna, I wanna do this first because I'm, I'm in history mode here and you can see a lot of things coming through. And one of the first things you see here is it called ALF to the long side, but I don't for the life of me know why it waited until 1475 to report that, that that's, that's up here. So what I did is I created a, a duplicate and then I changed every single one of those duplicates 
from a new high to a new low, I change them to a new 15 minute high and a new 15 minute low. And right off the bat, I noticed that ALF came through a lot earlier at 12.15, and it makes more sense. You look at these candles here, right there, that new high right there, that new 15 minute high on a stock that gapped up and met all the uh, criteria did come through, uh, did come through. But I'm just kind of going through that to try and figure out what's the, you know, the best settings to try and get these things as early as possible. I, I just want to turn these things loose on you guys so you can play around with them. You might be able, maybe you'll add, maybe, maybe you'll take away that uh, 50 cent um, gap and just use the 4%. Uh, maybe you'll add some more volume, but this is really just a starting point. And the idea is to show you all the four scenarios of what stocks do when they gap up or down. And then of course I added that fifth one, which by the way, I'd like to show that fifth one that looked for um, gapping and coming into the um, the 10 SMA. And I'm, I'm just gonna kind of cross these out because this is like right after the open, not really that interested in NTR. We'll take a look at that in a second, but look at that, TAK, how about that? Gapped up crapped and we saw it right there at the 10 SMA. So I think there's some value in this one. So when I share this one, you guys, you know, that's the one that I added today and it's very similar to the one that we looked at last week, Andy's I like the odds, but I'm just specifying more that I really want to see that candle when it hits that that 10 SMA right there. Now, I'm not going to go through all these trades because there's just so many, but what I will say is on a day like today, we had um, we had an up day. So let's look at the stocks that gapped and go, forget the gap and craps, forget the gap down and crap, and let's just look at the gap down and goes and see what we got. So I'm gonna run another history here real quick, just based on um, that. We'll just run that from this morning till now. What we should get, there we go, is just the green stuff. Um, and let's go back early in the day and kind of see what was coming through here after the open. No, they didn't start coming through for a while. Um, let me get rid of those. All right. Um, is this related to ALF? Yes, it must be. It's the warrants for ALF. Okay, interesting. That one came through a bit late too. It probably came through also. It would have on the, uh, or maybe not on the 15. But um, okay, so there's that one. Skill, how did that one look? All right, well, interesting. Oh, this is the gap down and go. This is, I, I think this is the other one you're gonna pay attention to. So the one that I made, gap down to the 10 SMA, and the ones that gap down and go, there's usually something to that, you know? Um, those, those can be interesting. So that was an interesting one in Riot today. And of course, these are just new highs repeating themselves there in ALF scale, we saw that one. Uh, gap down and, and go, same thing. So gap down and starting to move higher on the day. There's catching that one. Uh, FOCS, what did that look like? A gap down and started to go higher. So I don't want to spend too much time on those, but the point is, big takeaway, there's no one right scan that's going to give you all the good stuff and just everything you buy is going to work. There's a lot of stuff on here that just wouldn't work. But at least we're getting an idea of the stocks that might be in play based on their gaps. All right, so there's that one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset these to real time. And I'm going to turn them back on the way they should be so there's no confusion. And all of, all five of those are turned on. Again, the purple one is the one that I added today. Yeah, that one, that one didn't work. <laughs> it came down and, and hit the 10 SMA, but blew right through it. So, you know, they don't all work, but at least they're ideas. And then over here, you know, maybe you're getting some, some of the same names, but you might be getting them a little earlier because we're using the new 15 minute high. Oh, actually I have the gap and crap for that one too. Uh, so let's go back to real time on this one. I believe they're all still turned on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share these. And again, there's no holy grail here. It's just a starting point, just a starting point. One of the things I noticed about this 15 minute one is they work pre-market and post-market too, which is kind of weird. Interesting. All right, so I'm gonna drop the cloud again uh, to both of these. 
and just you know hand them out as something as a work in progress for the idea of these are the four scenarios of what a stock's going to do now all of them aren't going to work because the market's going to be different each and every day but at least it's something to focus on all right so we'll do the first one and then we'll do the second one for the 15 minute version and there's so many different things like i said you guys can do to this you can add more volume you can take away that 50 cent gap and just go off of a three percent or a four percent type of gap many different ways to rework these but i just kind of wanted to give you a foundational shell or a template at which you can use the multi-strategy to segment the four different gap scenarios with the bonus one being in purple the gap in crap but we're only going to see it at the 10 sma we're not going to see new lows all right does that make sense andy did i explain that okay yeah yeah it made it made very good sense to me Steve. All right. So those two scans in live format. And again, notice that the 15 minute one continues to it works pre-market and it works after market. But um, interesting. Didn't realize that was going to happen, but uh, it sure does. So, all right. Any questions we need to get to? Good. Looks like we're, we're doing good. And again, if anybody missed it, you just open the chat window on our go-to webinar floating toolbar there. Just click on the little triangle and it'll open up and you can grab the cloud codes. And I would fully expect you guys to rework those and you know do it in the way in which you want to want to use it. Maybe you only want to trade stocks under $25 that gapped up 6%. You, know, you can do it. But that's the template for you guys in which you can start to use. All right. So running out of not too much time we got a little bit of time left what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my first glance here on these sectors that i have in a few hours and i'm going to see if i can find two or three sectors that are going to be very interesting um, for tomorrow and thank you ram he's the first one on the board he wants to look at x1 when i come out of the scan i'll look at some of the scans you guys want to before we uh we say goodbye for today so here we go i'll go through these kind of quickly because i know what i'm looking for and I don't really like to mess around. Retail, okay. NASDAQ did that. Technology, same thing. See, these are all tech stocks at the top here. Semiconductors also at the top. Software, just grinding higher, peaked its head up. What I'm looking for is something that's either pulling back and resting on a nice support level or some really nice consolidation. I really haven't seen anything yet that's just jumping out at me to stop and really talk about XHB has been under pressure. And they still, you're still fighting a good fight over there. Steel looked really good back here. That looked really interesting, but gave it away. Uh, all right, solars. Solars are not looking bad. They're looking like what we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, the rounded bottom, the changing of the lanes, pushing through moving averages, building and closing above the, the, the declining 50. I'd say if there's any solar names out there that you guys like tomorrow, I kind of like that um, that consolidation that we've had here the last couple of days, up and sideways of three days. Not bad. Uh, decent pullback there in biotech, but it's not really jumping out at me. Treasuries. I liked healthcare last week, but it's just gone nowhere. It's just continuing to go sideways. But I'll tell you what, you know, if healthcare does decide to break out of that level right there. Uh, that could be interesting. The banks, what were the banks doing? Yeah, they just uh, they threw in the towel last week after the uh, the Fed, and they're kind of trying to recover. Oil, you can't stop it. You just can't stop the commodity oil. Financials are going to look the same. This is a pretty dismal group so far. I haven't really seen anything that's really jumping out at me other than that solar, T-A-N. These are the ones that are more down on the day, but that doesn't mean they don't look they don't can't look bad on the daily. Gold is that's a whole story unto itself. You know, the airlines looked really good a month ago, three weeks ago, but they've just fallen back into the zone as well. I don't think I can find much to really talk about to look at tomorrow that looks set up anyway. I'm sure something will be strong tomorrow, but in terms of showing itself and setting itself up, the only thing that really looked interesting to me was uh, the solars and the way in which they've kind of broken that downtrend of the 50 declining moving average, and they're just sliding sideways now. I think, uh, you got any solars you like what over did, there? What did, the, what did the semis look like? Well, Ron looks very nice. Uh, it breaks that like yeah, out of that. there. Yeah. Very similar to the ETF. Look at that volume too. Really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, that, I like that, Andy. That, that, that's a good one. Um, what did the semis look like? Somebody they, mentioned CSIP. I'll look at that real quick. 
a little yeah, under pressure. pressure. Yeah. Need to get back over that 50. The SNH has looked, um, they don't look huh. bad. They bounced off, they pulled, back, they pulled back and bounced off their 50 if you use the SMH. Now, if you're using a different ETF, I don't know. Yeah, no, that's it. That's what I use. That's weird. Interesting. Hmm. All right, guys. Um, so if you have any favorite solar names out there that look similar to TAN, kind of like Run did, I agree. Run DMC. That's not a bad looking stock right there. All right. So we'll reach the final segment here of our Tuesday webinar. We'll go through some of the stocks you guys want to look at. I know uh, Ram was the first one who wants to look at X1. And any anybody else that you want to look at a stock that you're interested in, you can type it in now in that questions window, and we'll take a look on the way out here. All right. Um, Parts VR. I'm starting with X1. With uh, oh, I'm sorry, I missed that yeah. one. Hey, not bad, Rom. You know, it's fighting that 50, like we talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay, test number one failed, but test number two might be okay. If we can get a couple more closes, it'll start to look like those solar charts we were just looking at. Doesn't look bad. It looks like it's trying to put in the good fight, good volume as well. Um, all right, so parts, SRNE, and Twitter. PRTS. You know, nice push today. Uh, got, probably got a little bit of ahead of itself, um, but it's not the kind of position I would take here uh, at this particular juncture after six candles. Um, what was the other one you had? Uh, SRNE. Not bad. Nice pullback off that big push that got ahead of itself last week and um, looks like it's Twitter. settling in. That one could have uh, some nice uh, action tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then Twitter was the third one this person asked about. A um, couple good candles there, but you're running right into the gap. So <laughs> that might be it for Twitter for the time being. It's had a good run. I'd, I'd be a seller right here. I'd be careful. I wouldn't be establishing a long position right here. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, Gabriel, I'm going to stay long silver, even though they don't look that great. I'm more a PSLV guy than an SLV guy, but they're hanging in there. I watched a video. They said a lot of that selling, a lot of that selling last week was not in physical. It was all in the future and the papers and the trading desks. So same old story with silver and gold. There's a lot of futures pushing the price around over there. Uh, KMX earnings play coming up. Um, just kind of chopping sideways there, avoiding that 200-day move on average. Not really much to see, especially if earnings. You're gonna have to wait and see what earnings bring for that one to really give you a good one. Um, SLCT select. Very nice gap. It wants to continue to hold that gap, but it's really going nowhere fast. It's pretty much the same place it was uh, two and a half weeks ago. That's always gonna drive somebody crazy, but maybe keep an eye on that um, on that red 20-day moving average. And this person. Gajanan also asked for the trade of the week. So if you're not aware, the trade of the week is POW, and we went over it, and it still looks very good. I'm staying long, and there's really no reason to get out. And as I said, um, you might want to be a small seller. Maybe if you can get this thing up to 870. It's really giving me trouble today. 870 would be an interesting level to take some off, but I think POW can get to 10 over the next uh, week or so. We'll see. Um, oh yeah, let's see, we'll get to that one. Oh, yeah. FCX and TGB. I gave up on TGB um, and FCX uh, look very look very much the same. I'll tell you when I gave up on TGB. I gave up on it when I said I got, I'm gonna give up on things. When I look at charts and I say, this just can't get back above the moving averages. A whole different story back here on TGB when it looked like that. But when it spends a week under its moving averages, I took off about 65, 70% on this day, and then I took off the rest on that day. I could kind of just feel it coming, um, but I'm not interested in anymore. It's, uh, I just looked, I pulled back, and I just said, man, this thing's had a really long run. I don't know how much more we can ask out of this. Um, so that's my thoughts on TGB and FCX. Copper was doing great, but it might not be um, so, so great. CLF. Uh, we liked the, a lot of a lot of the steel names. That doesn't look bad. That's a nice pullback there. Would have mm -hmm. been nice if it tagged that 50-day moving average as it did here, here, almost there, here, here, and here, but it didn't. So hey, it could always reach down on the open and complete that mission as the algorithms like to tag their their targets on the open. That could happen. All right, a few more here. Uh, da, da, da. SPL. Okay, is that it? Blunk. I never know. Yeah, that's right. Must have had. Did it have earnings? 
we haven't had something today with a nice gap. Yep. Um, you know, just gonna see if that gap can hold, but it's uh, 112 up to 130. You know, um, I would say over the next few days, keep an eye on what that 10 SMA does as the price uh, continues to rise over there. Uh, we'll do a couple more here. I think you missed Blink. Oh, you're right, Blink, that's right, which was last week's trade of the week, which really um, did nothing but make a lot of noise and throw a lot of elbows. I'm very disappointed in Blink that it didn't move off of that day back here. But I talk a lot about the red SMA of the 20 SMA being the backstop, all right? A little bit of a bottoming wick off the red 20 SMA here. Maybe it's gonna act as the backstop. Maybe that'll do it. I still love the short float of 37%. I still love the float of 36. Not one to, to take your eye off for sure, but it's been a bit disappointing to say the least. I actually got stopped out of it, I think, uh, today in our other account. And I know I did. Um, TTD, and we'll do a couple more, then we're out of here. A nice break of the 50-day um, moving average after it got held back. You know, as more that it can close and stay above the 50, the better. Not bad. It's it's working its way through there. Uh, did we do PLTR already? That one sounds familiar. No, it didn't. But that's a nice looking consolidation. Not bad. I mean, it's old school as I mentioned earlier. It's kind of old school. Uh, we couldn't get uh, you know um, blinked to uh, move out of its consolidation. Hopefully that can, but I wouldn't want to be short that one. You'd be guessing. Um, good question, Mr. Singh. Did you did I scare that I share the scanner that gave us the trade of the week? There is no scan for this week. Other weeks there are, but on this week there was no scan that gave us the trade of the week. It was more of a sympathy play, watching Smith and Wesson brands and Ruger blow the cover off their earnings, and it was a sympathy play. But I've been playing this stock as a as a trade for about six months now. I think Brian Shannon put it on my radar and I just, I like it, I've, I've made money in it. So you tend to gravitate to the ones and go back to the ones that you've done well in. So there is no actual scan for that one, but the two scans in the chat window there, Mr. Singh are the ones that I talked about earlier for the four different scenarios of what happens when stocks gap up and where they go from there. All right, we're gonna finish with Ram. He's asking about AXL. Hey, I like that. Mm -hmm. Axel, what do we got here? Motor vehicle, oh, okay, this is a good one. I am, I'm gonna riff on this for a second. Motor vehicle supplies. Well, let's 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 dive into that a little bit more. <laughs> Engages in the engineering design of our driveline system. Okay, what I thought it might've been was more like, like repair parts and supplies. I saw a great article over the weekend I shared with Andy. Uh, Zero Hedge talked about the resurgence of the used car market. I think a lot of people have heard about how hard it is to find a used car for a good price right now anyway. The prices are very inflated. And there was a great synopsis in the article that just said, people are not going to run out and just start buying, you know, two-year-old cars and brand new cars again. They're going to start fixing the ones they have. And believe me, we've got 72 and, you know, 80-month uh, terms coming up here uh, that are expiring. And so the idea was that, you know, the resurgence of the uh, used car, of, of just repairing your own car. The guy made a great point that the Americans that have always kind of dumped their old car and went out and got a new one, we might not be seeing as much of that going forward. Kind of an offshoot, but we're talking about charts. And back to the chart, I like the chart. I like those mm -hmm. two attempts to break the 50 and it couldn't do it. I would I would say this could be a very good entry here based on the fact that if you were the person that waited for it to break up above, break above 13, You'd be looking down here and going, man, I sure wish I would have waited for that thing to pull back and build a higher low off that 50-day moving average. So that's a good one, and that's a great one to end on. So thank you, guys. All right, just a quick announcement on the walkout since Scott's not here. Just a reminder, you know, we've got the um, the ebooks. Download the ebooks. Uh, we've got a few of them. If you need more um, direction on how to do that, just give us an email, or you can go to this uh, particular link down here for um, this particular ebook written by Dave Mabe, who's one of the geniuses behind our, our platform. Podcasts are always there. Um, if we have a new one, it will obviously let you know if you're on the podcast list. And always a 15% promo code right now, it's sunshine and you can try it for one month. You know, if you're, if you're kicking the tires and you haven't tried it yet, 
give trade ideas at least one month. You know, some people get a little overwhelmed at first. That's understandable. It's a very rich featured program. And, you know, once you've got a couple of weeks under your belt, you start to feel a little bit more confident about what you got. Tradeideas.com strategy is not giving you a tradeideas.com forward slash strategy, huh? Let's take a look at that together. Huh. I have to let them know if that's the case. That's what I got. So that should work. Trade dash. You might you might have forgot the dash. That's always possible. All right. But thanks for letting me know nonetheless. All right. So uh yeah, the podcast, promo code. You can follow us here at these uh handles, Facebook, but this is always where you want to go because anytime you give us something in writing at this address it actually creates a support ticket and somebody's got to deal with it so that's probably your go-to spot for anything you guys need we'll point you in the right direction thanks for the comments thank you john thanks dave thanks betty sue uh wasn't yeah prts was a trade of the week way back it way it was way back let's just check you know is there really anything we can do to check in on that did we look at parts or did we yeah we looked at it I already forgot what it looked like. Strong. Yeah, strong. So when I went off on a, a tangent there about um, people fixing their own car, I told Andy, we're going to be like Cuba. We're all going to be driving around 1950s jalopies with bailing gum and chewing <laughs> wire. <laughs> all right. We'll end on that joke. Thank you all for attendance. Again, we will not be here next week. I'm going to take a week off. But we'll be back in two weeks with a trade of the week email and a webinar. So have a good one. All right, everybody. I'll see you on Thursday. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.